And I'm Yong Su Yang uh, from the Department of Physics at KAIST. And it's really great uh, to be here in person participating in this very uh, great workshop uh, discussing about ideas and learning about newly developed stuff. So today I'm going to talk about uh, neural network assisted uh, electron tomography. And also I'm going to, this was my original title, and I'm also planning to uh, introduce you about some newly developed algorithm for the electron tomography that's called multi-slice electron tomography for uh, dealing with the nonlinear effect uh, in the electron tomography. All right, so this is the brief outline. Uh, first, again, I will talk about the neural network assisted uh, atomic electron tomography, electron tomography in atomic resolution where we can see atoms. So how neural network uh, can be helpful there. And then, yeah, the newly developed algorithm uh, for the multi-slice electron tomography. All right. So this workshop is about uh, mathematical advances for multi-dimensional microscopy. So it would be very natural to talk about tomography. So tomography is basically the process uh, of the, uh, converting these lower dimensional projections uh, into higher dimensional objects. For example, 2D projections uh, can be converted into 3D. That's the process of tomography. Usually the, the CT scan you take at the hospital that's a good example of the, the tomography, like 2D projections, X-ray scans, becomes 3D objects, so a human body can be imaged uh, in 3D. So specifically, I'm working with electron tomography. So we use electron microscopy as a projector uh, in real space, and then I, we collect atomic resolution uh, electron microscope images in multiple tilt angles, and then we use advanced algorithms to reconstruct we construct these 2D projections into atomic resolution 3D objects, then you can see individual atoms uh, in this 3D tomogram. So that's the atomic resolution electron tomography. Uh, and for example, you can do something like this. This is also my recent uh, result about the uh, uh, palladium and platinum core shell nanoparticle. And this is 3D volume reconstructed from the atomic electron tomography. And this 3D volume, you can see these individual dots all these individual dots are actually atoms. So you can 3D see individual atoms, and you can distinguish these bright atoms, those are platinums, and weaker atoms, these are uh, the palladium atoms. So you can get all the 3D atomic coordinates and chemical species from this 3D map. Uh, so from this work, uh, I was able to map out all these uh, direct strain correlations from the interface and surface, and we also found very interesting uh, local Poisson effects near the surface, so, I wanna talk, so it will be very interesting. But this workshop is again about mathematical advances uh, for the multidimensional microscopy, so I'm going to talk more about something more related to the mathematical advances. I'm not sure I made mathematical advances, but something I think closer to mathematical advances, that's what I'm going to talk about. All right, so this atomic electron tomography, electron tom tomography where we can measure the resolve of all the atoms, uh, that has been very successful. So in 2015, like uh, from the platinum nanoparticle, not platinum, gold nanoparticle, and the tungsten tip, all the 3D individual atomic coordinates are measured, and this was directly related to the internal uh, the strain map, and that was very successful. One led by John Miao here, and this is led by the Belgium group. And also, in 2017, these are just single element uh, electron tomography, but 2017, now we can resolve two different chemical species uh, and also individual atomic coordinates. It can give all the information about the chemical order and disorder. That was also uh, uh, one success of atomic electron tomography. And also, uh, John actually recently also uh, resolved uh, the, the, the non-crystalline material. Amorphous structure was also uh, individually atom uh, resolved uh, using electron tomography. And all these four are from the so-called ADF, annular dark field uh, scanning based electron tomography that was all successful. And there are some other uh, electron uh, microscopy methods. For example, the liquid cell, the bright field TEM method can also uh, resolve for individual atoms in 3D. That was also reported last year. And also uh, Colin recently published using the 4D stem tomography uh, to resolve individual atoms after some class averaging. All right, so electron microscopy has been, this electron tomography has been very successful. And uh, so this has been very successful. So why I'm trying to add some neural net onto it. So before uh, going there, uh, let me briefly uh, review how this tomography works. So one way to view this uh, electron tomography reconstruction is this. So we take projections in real space. 
So that's basically adding summation along a uh, different direction in your space. And that actually corresponds to uh, one slice in free space. So measuring one projection in your space means measuring one slice going through origin uh, in free space. So in ideal case, if you can measure enough number of projections in real space, then if you can completely fill this Fourier space, then by just doing simple uh, inverse Fourier transform, you can get this higher dimensional object. Of course, in real life, uh, this does not go this easy. We have a lot of problems. For example, we have so-called missing wedge problem, well-known problem of electron tomography. Uh, in electron tomography, well, you actually want to tilt our sample to one, a full 180 degree to collect all the data, uh, data set. Problem is that uh, you have to put your sample onto some electron microscopic grid, and you have to put this onto the holder, and then you start tilting. Then, because of this finite thickness of the holder of the grid, or the grid, at beyond certain tilt angle, this electron beam will be blocked uh, by this uh, grid or holder edge. That means, uh, beyond a certain angle, this area, wedge-shaped area in Fourier space, uh, cannot be measured. So this is so-called missing wedge problem. And uh, that can make a big effect in our reconstruction. For example, uh, this is the Fourier space uh, contains the missing wedge information. You can see that these are, this is actually the, reconstruct, the Fourier slice of the, re the reconstruction from the filtered back projection. Uh, from the data contains missing wedge. So you can clearly see these are measured projections and they're missing wedge. If there's missing information, then uh, your, the 3D reconstruction, and I'm only showing, this is not 3D, it looks like 2D, but I'm showing you the central slice of the 3D volume. What you can see is that uh, here, this part, originally in ground truth, these these are empty space. There's no atom here, but because there's no Fourier component here, actually this uh, Fourier ringing artifact happens along this missing wedge uh, direction. So you see actually these are all ghost atoms. Okay. And another problem is that I'm not sure if you can see it. Along the missing wedge direction, all this uh, intensity blobs are elongated along this missing wedge direction. And another problem is that uh, uh, these atoms, these atoms, you can see these are uh, weaker intensity atoms along this, this surface and the weak intensity atoms along this surface, they have different in intensity. Actually, uh, the intensity of these atoms along this missing, near the missing wedge surface atoms becomes much lower than actual the atom intensity should be. So it actually makes a problem in atom classification as well. All right. And there are some uh, algorithms we can actually, which can correct this uh, uh, missing edge artifact a little bit from the, the tomography reconstruction algorithm. And this is, for example, the reconstruction result from CERT algorithm. Uh, you can sort of partially recover this missing edge information. For example, uh, you can see this kind of uh, the peak structure, which is missing in the data, but it can be retrieved. But still, uh, it's a little bit better than this, but you can still see this ghost atom problem and the weaker intensity problem in this missing wedge surface and also elongation along the missing wedge direction. And this iron platinum work I just introduced, I was also involved in this work. And uh, we also had missing wedge problem in this case. We only were able to tilt plus minus 65 degree uh, during this experiment. So about 50 degree missing wedge was present. Uh, due to this problem, if we average all the, the, the atoms in the 3D volume, and then slice along xz slice, yz slice, and xy slice, you can see along the z direction, these atoms are elongated. It's supposed to be like uh, the symmetric shape, but it's all elongated along the uh, specific direction. Uh, but this is okay. This slightly degrades the resolution along the z direction, but the worst problem is actually the atom classification. So you can see these are the view of the surface of the iron platinum nanoparticle along different directions. And you can clearly see along these two surfaces, there are many, many iron atoms. Okay? And these iron atoms are actually may not be real. This can be coming from this missing wedge artifact. So uh, this, we actually classify platinum atoms and iron atoms by looking at the intensity. But along the missing wedge surface, the intensity becomes lower. So the platinum atom intensity actually becomes lower than it has to be, and it becomes classified as iron atoms. So this was actually a big problem. So we tried to solve this missing wedge problem when we were, were working on this project. Colin was also involved, and Colin actually tried to find some 
uh, inverse function, which can inverse this missing edge effect, but it was very hard. So uh, it, was, uh, it was very difficult. At the time, we were not able to solve that in direct way. So we ha actually had to use some uh, a, pr a priori knowledge about this composition of this iron platinum nanoparticle. And you had to do reclassification along the, this uh, near the missing edge surface. So this, this uh, like, the ground truth of so this good 3D object, if we have missing wedge, it degrades, and we try, it will be great uh, if we can actually revert this and obtain this ground truth back without uh, this kind of a priori knowledge, which is not always available. So that's where uh, our deep learning approach uh, can make help. So this work was done with the help uh, from my very smart student, Ju Hyuk Lee, uh, in KAIST. So, from this uh, ideal 3D structure, it, if it has missing wedge, it becomes uh, like corrupted like this. So we want to make it back. But we don't have information at the missing wedge. And there's no free launch. To get the information back, uh, it cannot be automatically come. We have to make additional measurement, or we have to use some sort of assumption. And here, what we can, so if we, this missing wedge problem can be solved for a very general electron tomography, that would be great, but I thought that that would be very hard because there's a very difficult problem. But here, we are looking at atoms. So we have uh, some sort of assumption of atomicity can be applied. That means that all the materials we are looking at, all these 3D volumes should only contain atoms. There is no other object can be inside. That means that everything inside this 3D volume should be sharp atomic potential, which can be convolved by the electron beam profile. That's the only thing which can exist in this 3D volume. So using that assumption, we can create a lot of training data sets for training the neural network. For example, we create a random shaped volume, okay? And we tried to apply this method to the platinum nanoparticle, which is the FCC structure. So we, we created FCC platinum nanoparticle with random shape and we filled in with the randomly oriented FCC lattice, and then we applied the 22 picomer RMST, so we, ran we randomly displaced slightly the, the FCC atomic positions. We also added about up to 0.5 uh, point defect. And we created this 3D ideal structure, and then we simulated this, uh, uh, the, the, the projections with missing wedge, and then run the tomography reconstruction. Then, due to the missing wedge, this idea of volume, after this simulated projection and reconstruction, it becomes this kind of uh, missing wedge corrupted projection, uh, corrupted 3D volume. So we did made this kind of uh, ground truth volume and missing wedge corrupted volume, like, uh, like ten, more than 10,000 uh, volumes, like this and this pair, pair. So these pairs of ground truth and other missing wedge corrupted volume were created, and then it was fed into the, the unit shaped uh, neural network. Yes? What's the purpose of the, <clears throat> the 22 picometer displacements? Ah, this is just... Think about that as a strain. It's huge, right? It's 10% strain. 22 picometer RMSD... It's about 200 picometers between platinum atoms, right? Okay. Two angstroms. So that's an enormous, that's an unphysically large displacement. So wait, why, why, what is its purpose? This, that, it's not 10, is it 10, that big? 10%. 200 picometers. About 5 to 10%, yeah. yeah. Okay. But I think it's just so it doesn't use the crystallinity assumption. Yes. So, the network doesn't so, we, so we just didn't want to make this kind of idea of a perfect lattice. We want to avoid, from, we want to add some add disorder. And this 22 picometer RMSD is actually the, the the precision we can obtain from the electron tomography the previously reported. So we actually added that uh, the precision, so this 20, actually the iron platinum work actually had the 22 picometer precision, so we actually exactly give the same RMSD value for that. But I did but not. That's, a, but that's an experimental limitation okay. of the tomography. Okay. Not actual displacements of the atoms, right? Yes. So you're, you're mimicking the experimental limitations with that displacement. Yes, but it, but actually later I will show you that it the actual shape and displacement, small displacement does not matter much because our uh, the the experiment worked with the the neural network trained with amorphous structure. Okay, I, I will show you the results soon. Okay. All right, uh, 
Anyway, we trained the neural network. So we, the, we have this, uh, the, the missing edge corrupted volume, and we have ground truth, and we do the supervised running for the, the unit structured uh, the neural network. Then, uh, this is the ground truth, the Fourier slice, one of the slices in the Fourier, uh, Fourier space. Ground truth, you can see all this peak structure. And then we tested our, uh, uh, this neural network by fading uh, this missing wedge corrupted reconstruction into this neural network. We clearly see this missing wedge. And then after going through this neural network, uh, it actually gives this kind of uh, missing wedge filled, uh, successfully filled by this uh, neural network. And it can not perfectly as good as ground truth, but it can more or less correctly identify the peak positions. All right, so this, uh, this is all simulation, but it actually works in simulation. So uh, this is the ground truth. 3D volume. Uh, this is one test set. Uh, this is one ground truth 3D volume. So I'm showing you the central slice of this reconstructed 3D volume. So you can see ground truth, all the, you can see clearly see the atoms and all these blue dots are the trace atom positions. So of course, this is ground truth, should be perfect. And this is the projection, uh, the reconstruction generated from the missing wedge, uh, containing missing wedge. And these projections are generated by the linear projection. So this is more closer to ideal case. And even with the linear projection, if you have missing wedge, uh, your central slice is like this, and you can see some atoms are not uh, traced correctly, and some ghost atoms actually being traced. But if you put this into the neural network, and this is the output of the neural network, then uh, all this uh, incorrectly, uh, the missing atoms were properly identified, and the ghost atoms actually goes away. And of course, we have to test this with multi-slice. Linear is too ideal. So we tested with the multi-slice simulations, and multi-slice simulation gives a little bit worse uh, reconstruction, of course. And then there's also ghost atoms and mistraced, the untraced atoms. And if you put this multi-slice reconstructions into the, the, the neural network, then it also gives this uh, ideally, almost ideally corrected uh, 3D volume with all the atoms can be correctly identified. All right. So all these are just uh, some the qualitative uh, description. And as John said yesterday, we have to be quantitative as much as we can. And because we are doing dealing with atomic electron tomography, we can actually trace all these 3D atom positions. Then using this 3D coordinates of the atoms, we can quantitatively compare the ground truth and uh, the, the 3D tomogram. For example, with ground truth, we do simulate the tomography experiment, and then we get the raw reconstruction, which uh, due to the missing wedge, it's actually a little bit degraded, and you can see some missing atoms. And then you put this into the neural network, and you can get the output. And then we actually compare this raw reconstruction with the ground truth. Uh, the, we have 3D coordinates, so you can calculate actually the, uh, the RMSD between the pair of atoms, both uh, existing raw reconstruction and ground truth. And also you can calculate tracing error, so how many atoms are uh, untraced or how many ghost atoms are found. So we actually uh, quantified tracing error and RMSD between ground truth and raw reconstruction, ground truth and the uh, uh, neural net augmented reconstruction. And actually, we initially used the word filter. We used uh, uh, like deep learning filter for like correcting this uh, non the, the missing edge effects. But one of our reviewers actually suggested the word augmentation is better than filter. Filter means like discarding something, but we are actually coming back uh, this, the, the missing edge information, so we are calling this uh, missing uh, deep learning based augmentation of the, 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 the electron tomography. All right, so let's look at the quantitative result. So this is the tracing error uh, from the linear projection simulation. So I'm comparing the ground truth and uh, the tomogram and the individual atomic coordinates found from that. And you can see almost more than 6% tracing error is found. And the RMSD is almost ever, on average uh, almost 36 picometer. And then, this is much larger than our experiment data. Why is this so large? Uh, this, uh, for this one, yeah. uh, we are using, uh, we actually added some angles, so I did not give details. We, did, we added some angular error, and also the number of projections is actually, we actually limited it a lot. So it's much similar, like about 20 projections, and uh, we added some angular error as well. So we, it can be a little bit larger. All right, this is tracing error and RMSD. And then if you put this uh, raw reconstruction into the, the neural network, then the result you obtain is this one. So the tracing error becomes like less than 1%, and RMSD also becomes like smaller than 20, uh, uh, the picometer, it becomes uh, much smaller. But this result is obtained by putting the, the FCC, presumably FCC platinum reconstruction 
into the network trained by FCC structure. So we put some FCC stuff into the FCC trained machine and come, FCC comes out. That's not surprising. So when my student came back to me with this result, it was very good. But to convince people, we have to train the machine using amorphous structure and fed, it that, fed the FCC structure into it. And if FCC comes out, then people will try to uh, will accept this. And then we tried that, so we put our uh, reconstruction into the machine trained by amorphous structure, and still we can get slightly worse than this uh, the FCC machine, but it's much better than raw reconstruction, both in tracing error and RMSD. And then we also tried what happens if the the parameters for creating the FCC structure is wrong. For example, we put some different uh, the Gaussian blurring factor into the training volume compared to our ground truth and then put our, the reconstruction into that volume. So that basically, we are putting the reconstruction to uh, the machine trained with a little bit wrong, the, 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 the broadening parameter. And even then, uh, the, uh, the result is much better than not uh, going into the machine. OK? And of course, this is the, the we put this result is coming from the, the, the simulation from the linear projection. You, of course, have to test this using the multi-slice. We didn't do the multi-slice because multi-slice was so slow. So we used the prism algorithm Colin developed uh, to create this uh, reconstructions, which contains the information of this uh, the, the nonlinear effect. And even, uh, still, same thing. All three different machines give gives much better result compared to the raw reconstruction. And then uh, all this, uh, this neural network I started because the internal structure can be well resolved even with the missing wedge. But usually the surface structure is problem that is much more affected by this missing wedge artifact. So we specifically looked at the surface, uh, the tracing error and surface RMSD for linear and the prism simulation. And in surface case as well, surface RMSD tracing error much better than before the machine. All right, I thought that showing, doing this, the, the amorphous trained machine uh, for showing the FCC, the structure can be augmented. I thought that will be enough, but our review, reviewers were much more careful, so asked, asked us to do a lot more work. So what we tried is we included a lot of defects. So we included 0 0.5, 5, 10, 20, up to 20% defect into our, the, the test set structure, and then uh, fed into the machine, and still, uh, all these defects can be all identified. You can see the tracing error is much below this defect level. That means all this point defect was identified, and RMSD was also better, and so the same thing. And then uh, the reviewer also asked us to, uh, now we put the, the, the crystalline structure into the, amorph the machine trained by amorphous uh, uh, the structure, and reviewer asked us to do opposite. So put the amorphous structure into the crystalline uh, structure trained machine and see if it uh, improves. Yes, it improves in all the case, RMSD, tracing error, RMSD, surface RMSD. And they also, he, also, and he or she also asked, uh, can you uh, simulate this uh, using this uh, structure with the grain boundary, a more complicated structure? And actually, he was right. This grain boundary structure, complicated structure, makes our reconstruction much worse. And a lot of ghost atoms and the, the, the uh, the mistrace atoms happens if there's multiple grain boundaries in the structure, but even then the machine gives much better result compared to the raw reconstruction. Okay, and you can see the, the tracing error and RMSD is much larger <coughs> than, especially the tracing error is big uh, if the raw reconstruction, but machine can properly treat this uh, in simulation. All right, we also tried like four nanometer amorphous nanoparticle and uh, the, we set different uh, RMSD for the core uh, atoms and surface atom, we tried all different stuff we were asked, and all of that turned out to be uh, that our machine is successful compared to the raw reconstruction. All right, all of these are simulations, and many times simulation works much better than experiment. So to really prove that this works, you have to work with the experimental data. So we tried the experiment using the platinum nanoparticle, so we actually measured the tilt series in atomic resolution and made the reconstruction. So this is the reconstruction result. Uh, you can see this ice surface. You can obviously see this surface part, especially around the missing wedge, is very degraded. And in free space, you clearly see the missing wedge. And this is a center slice. And as you can see, internal parts are OK. The atomic positions can be more or less found. Problem is surface, especially along the missing wedge direction. This is the missing wedge direction. There are some intensity blobs here, which can be atoms. 
but it can may not be atom. So it's ambiguous. It's difficult to tell up to which point is atom and up to, pit, well, to which point is not atom. And then, of course, we tried to put this into our machine, and then uh, it gives something like this. So the isosurface is completely cleaned up, and the FCC, uh, the, 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 the free epic structure has been filled, so missing wedge has been filled, and the center slice shows very sharp boundary between atoms and non-atoms. So non-atoms are gone, and proper atoms become real atoms, and this is very clean. And again, we tested this. So this machine is the, the machine trained by the FCC structure, but we also tried the amorphous uh, structure trained machine, and that also gives the same, uh, not exactly the same, but basically identical uh, the Fourier peak structure. So this can also show that uh, this principle works uh, even for the experimental data. Okay, and as I mentioned, the elongation along the, the missing wedge direction can be observed uh, before this is the, the, the slices of the averaged atom in this 3D structure. And you see the elongation due to the missing wedge, but that has been corrected after going through the machine. So after machine, it becomes always symmetric along all three directions. And uh, for the simulation case, we had the ground truth. So we can directly quantify which one is better. But this is experiment. We don't have ground truth. So how can you quantify our result? And actually, in experiment, what we have is these experimental projections. Because these, we believe that this is true and correct. So basically what we do is the structure we obtain from the raw reconstruction of this atomic structure, and structure obtained from the, the deep learning augmented structure. From these, we can actually simulate all these experimental projections and compare these two. And we, that compare region result is called like R factor. And R factor larger means uh, the, the, it's more, uh, discrepancy is larger. So we want smaller R factor. And R factor before augmentation is 0.192, after augmentation is 0.174. So this can tell us that indeed it's better, it's much more uh, consistent with the experimental data. All right, so from this we found about uh, uh, more than 1,500 uh, platinum atoms from our 3D volume, and the precision we actually estimated, and that was estimated to be 15 picometer, so that was better than before the, the, the augmentation is more than 20 picometer, so we got some improvement in the precision as well. All right, from this we can... How do you estimate the precision? Ah, okay, uh, precision. We actually do from using this uh, 3D atomic structure you obtained, we do the multi-slice simulation and do simulated reconstruction, and then uh, put, go through the machine. So you do exactly the same procedure of the experimental procedure using our uh, uh, volume, and then compare uh, how much deviation you obtain. We get, yeah. So you also know, since the particle is pure platinum, yes. if you have mostly platinum, platinum atomic distances, yes. Do you get, how precisely do you measure the platinum, platinum atomic distance on the inside of your particle? Ah, that's actually a very good point. What's the random variation in the lattice parameter in your, your tomogram? Ah, actually I have that value. I, I don't completely remember, but that's actually similar to this value. No. Those two values actually mostly agree. That's almost exactly very square root two times that value. All right. I have one question. Yes. If we look back at your deconstruction, can you go back to this? The deconstruction took me quite a bit. I will use the gem file. This is gem file, yes. Why? But gem file, we can actually find some in the black peak is the missing wedge direction. But this case seems not that you don't see. Yeah, I was also surprised. I was expecting some of this was filled by gem file, but in this case, it was not. Yeah, you know, previous data, like your, your paper, right? Yeah, my paper was filled. I, I remember yeah, that. So I was expecting a similar thing, but yeah. Actually, in this case, Genfire was not, like, it's better than not using the filter back projection, but this missing wedge was not completely filled from the Genfire in this oh, case. How big was the missing wedge here? Missing wedge was about 40, not 40 degrees. It was plus or minus 75 uh, measurements, so 30 degree, right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't understand. I mean, yeah, the reconstruction also not very good. I mean, compared to, like, your, I don't know why. So maybe it's... Well, yeah. well, perhaps tie back to what we were talking about yesterday. Why not? Why do a different experiment and not use, for example, some of the data for the AET published by? That, by that, that, that's a very good question. Actually, we wanted to try that. The problem is the iron platinum have uh, two different chemical elements, and that actually becomes much more difficult because, okay, we actually tried that, and that was one of our goal. But uh, after going through the machine, 
iron atoms are weaker intensity than the platinum atoms, right? So sometimes uh, the machine tries to completely kill the real iron atoms. So actually having right ratio, intensity ratio for the training for the iron and platinum will be very important. It will be important. And we try to like find like good way to like automatically determine all this and properly train it, but it was actually very hard. So like it was more difficult. So it was, we started from the easier problem of single element. All right. Uh, so I have 10 more minutes. <laughs> okay. Uh, 15, okay. Uh, I have to go through it very quickly. So we measured uh, the surface uh, structure accurately. So we can make, map all the, the facet structures and uh, we can calculate strain. I'm going to go into much more details. We can calculate strain and the strain uh, actually matches with the DFT calculation for the tensile and compressive strain for 111 and 100 facets. All right. And we measure surface and people, when we measure surface, people are also interested in interface. Whenever I, ah, we can measure surface and people also say about interface and we also try to measure interface between two platinum nanoparticles, basically nano dumbbell. And we do the same thing, we do the raw reconstruction and before machine learning is like this. And after machine learning with the FCC trained machines like this and the machine trained by Amorphos, we give similar structure. And this elongation is also corrected by putting this into the machine. So we got this 3D structure, and this is to show that we have to do the 3D, and uh, I'm going to skip this. And these are also the result. Uh, we actually measured, uh, we observed that there is stacking, stacking fault exactly at the interface, A, B, A, so this is the, the, the FCC platinum, so it should be A, B, C, A, B, C stacking, but A, B, and before C, there's another A that was inserted at the interface, so we saw the clear twin boundary. So this is actually not single twin boundary, double twin boundaries. So this is one twin boundary, another twin boundary, uh, by having this uh, the stacking fault, and actually uh, it can all be measured. And initially I was surprised that why there's like double twin boundary, because two FCC like slightly comes together, then I expect single twin boundary, but why there is double? So initially I thought that this is very interesting, but uh, MD people already like long time ago calculated all this, this merging process, and they already expected that when these two nanoparticles with similar orientation actually match together, then due to the surface, the diffusion, additional layer will be formed, and this double twin boundary is actually not surprising. So this is all done. And we actually did further anal analysis. I'm going to skip through. So we saw some disorder uh, in this nanoparticle, and the orientation of this nanoparticle, this one part and another part, was slightly misoriented. And there's some higher deviation of atoms compared to the perfect FCC lattice near the interface. And that actually gives us some uh, strain in 3D strain. Uh, this is 3D strain map, and we see very high strain near the protruded region of this nanoparticle. So this is not very isotropic strain. Very anisotropic strain can be found, especially very high tensile strain near the protruded region. And this was also already predicted by the MD simulation during the, this coalescence process. Uh, due to the, the strain, it can induce some protruding region of this nanoparticle with very high strain. And it's, uh, that was possible, and we also verified through the MD simulation. If we put our 3D structure into the MD simulation and uh, electrostatic the, the ele not molecular static simulation, and the result also gives this anisotropic strain distribution. Not identical, but yeah, we can see uh, this kind of anisotropy can be uh, uh, reproduced even from the MD simulation. All right, and okay, we have quantitative position of all the atoms. So can we get some uh, physically meaningful information. So actually the strain and the catalytic properties, the oxygen reduction re 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 the reactions are directly related. Uh, so DFT calculation shows that the, uh, the OH, uh, binding energy, and the oxygen re reduction reaction activity are directly related. And this OH binding energy and surface strain are related. By combining these two, we can map out the uh, strain and ORR activity relation. And you can calculate all the surface strains from our 3D atomic positions. And these are the calculated strain in 100 and 101 facets. And from this, we can map the, fully map out the, uh, the ORR activity at the surface. All right, so I have 10 more minutes. So the second part I want to introduce you is the multi-slice electron tomography using for this time. So, this usual tomography algorithm actually uses a uh, linear uh, method of the tomography reconstruction. You assume that the projections are linear in most tomography reconstructions, but most of the electron microscope images are actually nonlinear projections. So you can actually create 
uh, some problem. For example, this is simulated copper and gold coercion nanoparticle structure. And I'm not sure how uh, it's well visible. The surface, the shell part, the gold, the, the high Z element can be well visible, but inside the core part becomes very degraded and becomes much more difficult to find the correct atomic positions, especially when uh, we have the exact zone axis inside our the, the, the tilt series. So we initially thought about how to uh, correct this. And uh, to correct this nonlinearity, we have to use some uh, nonlinear, we need some method which can deal with this nonlinearity. And there are many multi slice based algorithms already developed. So I'm not the first person trying to attempt this problem. So Colin actually uh, developed this very nice uh, algorithm uh, using the Brightfield high resolution TEM, using the multi slice approach. Uh, this, the, the, the nonlinear correction is possible. Colin already uh, simulationally demonstrated, and more recently, he did some lower resolution the experimental data as well. And also, with the well known, this, the, 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 the hitting the vibration limit, the, the multi slice tychography result, it also utilized the multi slice approach to correct this nonlinear effect for finite thickness sample. So, uh, we actually tried this. Our initial attempt was a little bit ambitious. We did ADF stem image. So basically we have uh, the annular dark field detector and uh, take the ADF tomography tilt series. And then we are trying to retrieve this 3D volume uh, and correcting for the nonlinearity. So we do the multi-slice calculation from the 3D volume. This is what we tried. And compare with this uh, the experimentally measured ADF uh, image, and then update this volume by taking the gradient descent. The problem, probably Colin is showing very shocking <laughs> face, because this multi, we can basically, uh, this multi-slice process, everything can be made, like represented in the combination of some linear process, but ADF actually only integrates the, 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 the some area of the diffraction pattern and sum up, and then it becomes pixel intensity. So this process included in this, uh, this imaging and this process and actually completely killed our algorithm. So this was, doesn't work. So I was too ambitious correcting this ADF, uh, uh, using the, the correcting the nonlinearity using the ADF images. Then this doesn't work. So we don't want this kind of like some summation, this kind of nonlinear process which kills our algorithm. That means we have to use this full diffraction pattern to sort of do that. That means you have to do the 4D stem experiment. So we uh, moved on during the 4D stem. This is still like simulation stage. We haven't uh, like succeeded with the experiment yet, but we did the 4D stem simulation. And not only the 4D stem in single angle, we want to do tomography. So we did multiple tilt angle, and each tilt angle we did, uh, collected the 4D stem uh, measurement. So basically it's 5D data, and try to reconstruct uh, this uh, uh, 3D volume. But this kind of, this is sort of like tychography and tomography algorithm. And by using this 4D stem, not only correcting the nonlinear effects, we can also expect some dose reduction can be achieved uh, compared to the ADF. And the low Z element sensitivity will also be gained. That's what we are trying. Uh, we, we expect by employing this 4D stem. Uh, and this, like, this is sort of 4D stem and tomography algorithm, like, is, has been already uh, suggested and tried by many people. John actually already tried the simulation uh, using the tychography tomography method, and Colin also already succeeded to get the atomic structure from the tycho tomo experiment. But the difference we take is that uh, these approaches actually reconstructs the 2D tychography image first, and then it will be fed into the 3D tomography algorithm. That's one. And, and second, these algorithms use sort of linear assumptions. And here, our new algorithm try to uh, uh, be, go beyond that. So we are going to use the multi-slice approach to deal with the, mul the, the multiple scattering or nonlinear problem. And also, we do the we don't do separate the 2D reconstruction process and 3D reconstruction process. So from the, the 5D, the 4D stem tilt series, we directly obtain the 3D volume without bothering with the 2D reconstructions. Okay. So basically, uh, I'm not gonna show all the re any equations or anything, so, but it's the simple. We have all these probe positions in one angle, and another all probe positions, and each probe position gives the diffraction pattern. So basically what we do is from this 3D volume, uh, along for one probe position at one angle, uh, we actually do the multi-slice calculation 
from this 3D volume to calculate one diffraction pattern and compare them and then calculate error and take the gradient. And if you take gradient of this multi-slice algorithm, it naturally gives uh, the back propagation. So slice, slice by slice ma uh, manner along the back propagation direction, you can get update of each pixels and then you update the entire volume from one probe position. We do that for the second probe position, third probe position, uh, do that. And then we do a, another angle. We do a multi-slice along this direction and then take gradient, compare and take gradient and back propagate along this direction. We continue this, this process for all probe positions and all tilt angles to update this 3D volume. So we iterate this until this converges. Question? Yes. So in computer graphics, they call this inverse rendering. Yes. Uh, and the, the problem is usually a memory problem, like to store all these back propagated uh, positions. So uh, how much, what's the resolution that you can achieve? So uh, I mean, is there a memory problem that you're running into? Ah, uh, memory problem in this case. Yes, we may run into the memory problem. So you have the, to be... The back propagation will be very expensive, yes, in terms of storage. Uh, I mean, from I, the autograd, yes, you do autograd through the multi-slice method, as I understood. No, analytic gradients. Or oh, this analytic. This is analytic, and you can take the gradient analytically. There's an analytic solution. Because all, as I mentioned, all those are sort of linear processes, Fourier transform and propagation, and those are sort of all the like combination of linear processes. So you can just take the derivative, and by using chain rule, it just naturally becomes the, the back propagation. So that's all analytic. Yeah. yeah. Um, I understand this is all simulation, but I have a question. I suspect, how, how much do you suspect uh, data alignment will become harder to do in 40 yeah, that, steps. That, that, that would be very hard. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the realization of this one will be really, really challenging. I can uh, imagine It could be that. easier. There's more information. Sure. <laughs> Defocus probe typography is very easy to align the probes. Yeah. So that's one hope we are having because the typography usually relies on this overlap constraint. And here, we have constraint of one fixed 3D volume for all diffraction patterns we have all in all different angles, not the angle by angle constraint. Uh, constraint. All diffraction pattern has to come from one fixed 3D volume. So I hope that that stronger constraint can help us to more finely find the pro like update the pro positions or pro profiles during this reconstruction if we apply this to experimental data set. All right, so this is the result. So this is our multi-slice electron tomography, we named it MSET. So the MSET algorithm gives us this re, the reconstructed 3D volume uh, from the 4D stem data, the simulated 4D stem data set. And then uh, you can get uh, the profile of the integrated intensity for all the traced atoms. And you can see this, we simulated uh, copper and gold quotient on a particle. And you can see these copper atoms and the uh, Gold atoms intensity are well separated, and you can see all the atoms are well uh, reconstructed. And we actually tried what happens if we don't do multi-slice, so we actually do single slice, the usual, the, 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 the not doing multi-slice, assuming linearity and the for this time reconstruction, then it becomes worse. So the RMSD becomes worse, and tracing error becomes worse, and classification rate, correct classification rate between gold and copper actually becomes also slightly worse if we don't have multi-slice. And if we do the ADF stem method, we actually use the Visayo algorithm, actually John and me developed. Uh, okay, this tracing error is actually better than the single set, the single slice electron tomography, and the classification is also better, but RMSD is slightly worse, slightly worse. But this is okay, these are all like infinite those and like no missing which ideal conditions, so everything more or less works well, but still, this the MSET new algorithm actually works slightly better. And then we actually tried the dose test, and electron dose we varied from infinity to some like 10, 2 times 10 to the 7, 10 to the 6, 10 to the 5, 10 to the 4, 10 to the 3. And actually, surprisingly, up to the 10 to the like 5 and 4, this is total electron dose of the full tilt series, the diffraction pattern looks very, very like noisy, but actually the full distance reconstruction properly gives uh, the atomic structure. Of course, the, the tracing error and classification rate becomes a little bit worse for low electron dose case, but still, uh, you can get some region of structure if this is the single element material. And you also tested the missing wedge. So the perfect non-missing wedge case, the result is, of course, good. And if we have plus minus 75 degree uh, missing wedge, 
the angular range, but still the result is actually very good, almost identical to the plus minus 90 degree. And plus minus 50 degree case, the RMSD becomes worse, but still the result looks good. And plus minus 25, even like very large missing wedge case, actually uh, m set algorithm actually gives uh, some structure, it's not completely that, okay? And the classification is still good, and tracing error is slightly worse than RMSD, still uh, 16 picometer, it's not that bad. Uh, all right, and we actually tested this uh, with some more realistic uh, uh, situation with some finite electron dose with the uh, uh, plus minus 75 degree angular range. Uh, the m set algorithm performed like this. We have like six point, uh, like we have two elect different electron dose, and I compared that with the single slice electron tomography and the usual ADF stem method. And you can see at low, especially for the lower electron dose, this one, the RMSD and tracing error and classification rate is much better compared to this uh, uh, other cases. So this, especially at lower dose, this M uh, the multi-slide uh, uh, the method performs actually better. And we actually, our one of our target is one is lowering the electron dose that looks like successful, and can we resolve this low Z element? So we actually simulated barium oxide nanoparticle and see if we can resolve the oxygen atoms. And if you have enough electron dose, total electron dose of two times 10 to the six case, you can actually uh, resolve many of the oxygen atoms inside the structure, and I'm not sure if it's visible. These bright atoms are variums and the weak atoms are the oxygens, they can be visible uh, if we use this multi-slice based the four system approach. And single slice case, it becomes much worse, but we can slightly see the oxygen atoms, but uh, the result is much worse. And ADF case, all the oxygen atoms are missing. You basically cannot see oxygen atoms. They are basically look like background, especially at the low electron dose. And we actually, I'm, <laughs> I already, okay, uh, these are the, the result at even lower electron dose, and quotient case very low, much lower, like of, about factor 100 times lower electron dose case, the quotient case can be well reconstructed, but oxygen is a little bit different, difficult. So for oxygen, we need a little bit larger uh, the electron dose, but for a high Z element case, about 100 times lower electron dose, you can still resolve a uh, very nice uh, 3D atomic structure. All right. Uh, so far, that was uh, this M set is all simulation yet. So, so uh, I hope experimental data we can uh, like show that that actually works, also works. Most of this work is done by Juhak Lee, my student, and I also thank all my collaborators. Thank you very much.